Philip Vickers Fithian, of course, is born in Greenwich. Uh, if you look at tax records, actually, uh, the family is actually uh, uh, listed in their Hopewell. Uh, so, so he's not technically uh, part of the, on the Greenwich tax rateable list. He's on the his father's on the Hopewell tax rateable list. Uh, but for lack, you know, we won't, for, for sort of general co general conversation, he's born in Greenwich uh, in 1748. Uh, he his father Joseph is an ordinary grain growing farmer. There's nothing extraordinary about the way he was raised. There's nothing extraordinary about his father's life. There are thousands of small, middle class, we might call them farmers, uh, people who owned anywhere between 100 to 200 acres of land. This was quite common. He was a grain grower. He dabbled in livestock, flax. Uh, again, nothing unusual about this. And Philip keeps a work journal. Uh, very early on, in, when he's about 18 years old, he starts recording his day-to-day -day experiences in the field. Uh, sowing, reaping, harvesting, bottoming chairs, uh, fishing for cod in the Cohansee, making apple cider, and a host of agricultural things that he's involved in. What's fascinating about Fithian's journal, especially the work journal, though, is if you read the way he closes each day's journal, I should say right about the same time, it, it's hard to tell whether he has two journals or he's adding to the work journal here. But at the same time he's writing the work journal, he's also keeping another journal, and occasionally we'll interject this into the work journal itself, uh, about what he's doing at night. Uh, unlike most farmers, and I've read probably 20 or 30 farm journals just like Fithian's to get some comparison and context for his journal. Uh, and what's very unique about Philip is he spends most of his nights reading uh, classic works of literature, poetry, uh, um, Blackmore's Poetry is one of his favorite books that he likes to read. He likes to read all of these great authors of the day, which is normally something that the average farmer does not do. So immediately I began to sense this is no ordinary guy we're dealing with here. This is a guy that is deeply connected and deeply rooted to the agricultural life of the Cohansee River region. But at the same time, uh, he's itching for something more. He's itching in many ways to leave the, the Cohansee home and become something other than what his father would expect of him. And this is particularly scandalous, as I write in the book, since he's the first son uh, and is sort of destined to inherit the farm and, raise, and, and work the farm in the way his father had taught him to do. Uh, there are two great letters that he writes, some of you may be familiar with, um, to his father pleading and begging uh, to go to, he pleads and begs with his father to let him go to school. And for school, what he means is Enoch Green's Presbyterian Academy in Deerfield, which is a preparatory school for the College of New Jersey at Princeton. Um, I, I won't go into the details, but these two, these two letters are very wonderful. They're actually published in Alan Palmer's book, uh, uh, what is the title, My Beloved Cohansey, I think. Uh, you can read them there. But, you know, just him sort of obviously looking to take a different path really for the first time in the history of uh, this Fithian family, and really for the first time in the history of this whole sort of down Jersey, if you want to call it that, region. Uh, Fithian is bucking against tradition and suggesting that he wants to go pursue something else with his life. Uh, as far as I can tell, he's one of the first college graduates to come out of uh, Cumberland County or this general area. So he's got ambitions uh, that go beyond farming. And he eventually enrolls in the College of New Jersey. As some of you know, uh, his classmates, well, they're the year ahead of him, actually, are James Madison, uh, Philip Freneau, one of the great poets of the age, Hugh Henry Brackenridge, a politician and writer who was influential in founding the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, Aaron Burr is in his class at Princeton. The president of Princeton is John Witherspoon, uh, the clergyman who is the only uh, clergyman to sign the Declaration of Independence. Uh, he's there. I talk a lot about the whole chapter three of the book talks about his experience. Uh, it's exhilarating for him at Princeton, but at the same time, it's, it's a little bit of a culture shock. He doesn't have a gown, for example, to wear, or it's, you know, it's, not, it's not been made yet. Students had to wear gowns every day to class. Uh, he writes home to his mother, Hannah, on several occasions, worrying, being a little bit homesick and so forth. Uh, but he gets through, graduates in 1772, uh, returns home. Uh, to Cohansey to train for the Presbyterian ministry. It's, that, it's then when he gets the call from John Witherspoon uh, that uh, Robert Carter III needs a plantation tutor down on Virginia's northern neck at his plantation, Nominee Hall. 
Philip Vickers Vivian takes the job despite the fact that his parents have died while he's been at, at Princeton, uh, and he's left with uh, um, several brothers and sisters. Well, one sister, and I think it's four brothers off the top.